So our mission as a company is to bring integrity and charm to ordinary and overlooked food. What does that mean? Well, to us, integrity is really about how we source our ingredients and how we treat them, how we process them and bring them in, really the physical side of what we do. And charm is because the purpose of food is to nourish, but it's also to entertain. So charm is really about that magic of food that Robin was talking about. The, the attitude, the character that we bring to the food and to the fact that food is something that brings us together. And that's what we hope to bring to our condiments. So it all started uh, about nine years ago back in Providence, uh, which is where I was going to school with a friend of mine. And we had this recognition that food in America was changing for the better, but condiments had really been left behind. So in the supermarket, for instance, every aisle had a better version, a natural, an organic, something that was really premium. If you looked at dairy and you saw the organics, if you looked at grass-fed beef and the interest across the country in farm-to-table dining, there was really something happening. But if you looked at ketchup, for instance, it really hadn't changed since the 1950s. There wasn't any innovation there. Uh, it was really more of an industrial product than it was a food product. It was high fructose corn syrup and tomato concentrate. And so we said, OK, well, if food is changing and condiments haven't, could we actually create something better? Could we create a ketchup that was in line with the way that we wanted to eat and in line with the way that America increasingly wanted to eat and very importantly, satisfied that very specific flavor profile that people look for when they grab a bottle of ketchup? And so to do that, we started first with the ingredients and thinking what would go in a ketchup. How, how could we make it from real food? So instead of using tomato concentrate, we started with whole tomatoes. And instead of high fructose corn syrup, we started with real sugar. And we blended them together in a way that resulted in a texture that resembled real food, not just uh, a kind of goopy syrup. And over time, we've grown. Our product line has grown from ketchup to Mayonnaise, which is actually the first now to use certified humane free-range eggs, uh, and sunflower oil, like a traditional French mayonnaise, with no synthetic preservatives. We launched a mustard, and we launched a couple of other products that I'll talk about later. And while it's what's in the product that makes it spectacular from a sensory point of view, the way that it tastes, the way that it smells, the texture, we realized that we would have to do something more than that. And we realized that if we were going to win in this space, if we were going to create something that was going to challenge uh, an American icon, a monopoly, if you will, Heinz ketchup that everyone's familiar with since childhood, then we would have to really tap into something deeper. Because we didn't have any advertising budget. We didn't have any reputation. Nobody really knew who we were. And so we said, we need to really reach people on an emotional level. And we need to figure out why is this worth doing and why should anyone care about a better ketchup. And over the years, what we've realized is that food actually has superpowers. If you think about it, food is this ancient human practice. And it's something that actually connects us intimately with each other. We share meals and strangers can become friends. Friends can become family over meals. Food is also something that is so special because it connects us intimately with nature. We're starved from the natural world in, our, in, in a steel and concrete structure like this. And we crave it deeply, but everything we eat d does and should come from nature. And food has the superpower to connect us to nature and to connect us to each other. And we believe that if we create our products, if we run our business with that philosophy, and we don't just treat food like any other industrial good with inputs and outputs and costs and profit, but we really focus on how can we bring these superpowers of food to life for people, then that's how we're going to be able to capture attention. And that's how we're going to be able to compete. That's how we're going to be able to actually earn our place in culture. And that gets to what we're really all about and what we believe is that the reason I've devoted years of my life to this is not just to improve a specific ketchup. It's not just to improve a, a specific mayonnaise. Condiments are this little detail 
in the food world. And yes, we all have a relationship with them, and yes, they're universal, but we believe that if you can show people that something that has never changed in their life has the potential to change and be better, and you can take a detail that's never moved and make it into an amazing sensory experience for someone that, with meaning, then you can open up their world to think about food in a different way. To say, wait a minute, I never thought about ketchup like that. And make them realize condiments are food too. And make them ask these questions. Well, where do other ingredients for condiments come from? Where do ingredients for food come from? And ask them to engage in these questions about how food comes from nature and about the superpowers of food. And so, as a company, we believe that we're, we're focused on the way that things can be, not just the way that things are. And we encourage everyone to think about that in food and in the rest of life. Otherwise, we're living in a world defined by those before us and those around us and not manifesting what we really want and what you really want. And so to do that, we realized if integrity and charm is what we're bringing to food, then we needed to lead with charm. And we needed to tell our story in a way that engaged people, not logically, because I can tell you that it's got half the sugar of Heinz, and I can tell you that it's not made with high fructose corn syrup, but there are facts and figures for everything out there. And if people actually behaved logically, if they listened to the facts, they wouldn't smoke cigarettes, they wouldn't eat nearly as much fast food as they did, the world would be a very different place. But people find facts irrelevant. It's all about emotion. That's what drives our decision making. That's what drives our behavior. And so we said, well, if we can bring this character and bring this sense of purpose to what we do, then we can really create adoption and we can really create advocacy and we can make better food grow on its own. So you'll notice that our ketchup in this, this is an older bottle, but you see it looks really different. And we said to send this message instead of using plastic to, to launch, we're going to use glass, more like the language of a high European preserve. And instead of using these you know, low quality ingredients, we're really going to show what these ingredients look like, show where they come from. And of course, instead of being uh, the Americana that everyone associates with ketchup, and you'll notice that I do have an American accent, but we said, let's be English. Let's bring sort of this quirky Victorian naturalist, uh, this sort of poshness to condiments to represent who we are and to represent the kind of character and attitude of a spice trader and an adventurer and an explorer. And that's who Sir Kensington is. And the way that we do that, uh, and the power of doing that, is related to what Robin was talking about of food entertainment in the Food Network, is by bringing food education and food entertainment together. That's how we get people's attention, and that's how we bring them into what we do. You can see here that we created the world's first French fry museum in New York two years ago called Fries of New York, where we asked 100 different restaurants for French fries. We embalmed them in a thin layer of resin, and we put them on display, and we told the story and the history and all the variants of French fries out there. We had the waffle cut, the curly fry, the straight fry, the steak fry. We gave them all Latin names. The wedge was called cuneus. And this brought people in, and we were able to tell the story of condiments, tell the story of Sir Kensington's, and tell the story of French fries, food education, and food entertainment together at the same time. These are our, our product values, and I'll, I'll talk about why these are important. We say that we don't make it unless we can make it better. And last year, we set out to make a, uh, an eggless mayonnaise, a vegan mayo one that didn't actually use any egg to emulsify the oil. Because when you make a mayonnaise, you need egg yolk and you need oil to come together to make that perfect texture, that fluffy, rich, creamy texture that's easily spreadable. But without egg yolk, you're left with a couple of different options to emulsify that mayo. Most of what you'll find in the market is highly processed ingredients, soy protein and pea protein. They have kind of a vegetal flavor and they have a texture that really isn't up to par with what we believe mayo should be and, it, and isn't really up in line with our classic mayo. And as we say that if we don't love it, we don't launch it, we knew that we couldn't go to market with a standard vegan mayo. We also say that when it comes to our ingredients, if it's not food, it doesn't belong in our food. So we didn't want to use highly processed ingredients. We didn't want to use any chemicals. And when it comes to our suppliers, we say we're only as good as the company that we keep. So we needed to create a solution 
We needed to find inspiration of how to make an eggless mayo that really satisfied all these things and was able to bring food education and food entertainment into the category. And what we found was a magical liquid, a liquid called aquafaba. That's what you get when you boil chickpeas in water. The water will essentially bring the proteins and starches from the chickpeas into the water, and those proteins and starches can then emulsify oil just like uh, an egg yolk does. And we found a community of vegans online that was doing this and making icings and making meringues, and we said, could we apply this to mayo? And lo and behold, it worked. And we were able to, kind of on a bench top sample, uh, create a vegan mayo that used this aquafaba that most people in their homes would commonly throw away when they open a can of chickpeas and pour it down the drain, not really realizing that this actually has some magical culinary properties to it. And lo and behold, we were all able to create fabanes, which is uh, this eggless vegan mayo. Would anyone like this jar? Can you pass this to the woman behind you? Thank you. So enjoy that. Refrigerate it when you get home or eat it immediately. It is a refrigerated product. Um, but because of that, we were able to launch our fabanes and we earn press in the New York Times, uh, in a tremendous amount of different publications, Food 52, Wired, and we've won three awards for this product. The Nexty Award, um, the How Good Certified Award, and the Fabi Award, which is the National Restaurant Association Award that will be uh, debuted at the NRA show this year. And it, yeah, does this product taste good? Of course this product tastes good. This product tastes great. That's why we were able to launch it, and that's why we felt good about it. But it, didn't, did it win these awards just for the taste? No. It won because of the food education, the food entertainment, and the innovation that we were able to bring, the storytelling that we were able to bring to this ordinary and overlooked ingredient, aquafaba, this chickpea broth that had the power to capture people's attention. And so this is our, this is our philosophy, and in terms of the traction that we've been able to gain with this, uh, last year we were served, our products were served uh, 28 million times across our ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise all across the country um, and in uh, restaurants and hotels and even casinos here like the Wynn that serves our miniature jars of condiments. And we're in over 6,000 grocery stores across the country. Whole Foods is our biggest customer. Uh, and we're really starting to make a splash there and starting to break through um, and slowly crossing the chasm more into becoming America's leading natural condiment brand. So. That's what I have to share with you today. I hope that you all enjoyed this and that you'll join us, um, that you'll taste the products that we have and you'll learn about what we do. We're just over there on the other side of this uh, curtain.